There are a lot of great musicians who have put their faith in Jesus at some point in their lives. My goal is to provide a list, which will not be comprehensive, of some of the rock and roll icons who have come to a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Several of them I did not include because I did not feel they met the criteria for the admittedly subjective label of legendary. It does not imply that they were not excellent. Nevertheless, based on what I could discern, they did not have the level of popularity or name recognition among the general public that is required to be considered for that distinction. Hello, I'm Julia. And welcome to Rated G. I really hope that you have liked going through this list. Please feel free to add some of your favorites in the comments section below. Number 1, Dave Ellefson. David Warren, Dave Ellefson is the bassist for the American thrash metal band Megadeth, which he helped to start. People have also called him Junior, to tell him apart from Dave Mustin. Ellefson lives in Scottsdale, Arizona. Ellefson plays bass guitar in the band Megadeth, and he also does other things, like Temple of Brutality, F5, and Killing Machine. In a recent interview with Blabbermouth, he said, I think Dave Mustin has been very open about his faith, and I've been open about mine. Getting sober for 20 years is what really brought me back to my Christian faith, but I was always a Christian as a kid. I was born and raised as a Christian, and every Sunday, my family went to church. Number 2. Brian Head Welch Welch found God in 2005. In March 2005, he was baptized in the River Jordan. As he later said in a radio interview for Full Armor of God, One day I was walking around, doing my rock and roll thing, making millions of dollars, being successful, etc., and I was hooked on drugs. The next day, I had revelation of Christ, and I was like, everything changes right now. Hear about this, this Jesus Christ who's real, the Son of God who was here and, you know, died on the cross and, and raised from the dead and came and, uh... Welch wrote a book with the provocative title, Save Me From Myself, How I Found God, Quit Corn, Kick Drugs, and Live to Tell My Story. In it, he talked about his spiritual awakening. Later, he went back to playing guitar for the band Corn, but he hasn't stopped being a Christian. He still meets with fans after concerts to pray for them and lead them to Christ. Can you do that? Just say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Number 3. Jonathan Cain. I'm forever Famous musician and songwriter. He is best known as the keyboardist and rhythm guitarist for Journey. Nonetheless, Cain is a devout Christian who has freely discussed his spiritual journey. Cain was raised Catholic and attended Catholic school. He says he didn't know Jesus personally till later in life. Don't stop believing, the man, the band, and the music that inspired generations describes how Journey's 1980s tour helped him find faith. He wondered why he was so successful and so empty during a difficult moment in his life. He accidentally found a church in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where a pastor taught him about Jesus. Cain says this experience altered his life and made him study the Bible and attend church regularly. Since then, he has discussed how his faith has impacted his life. His Christian albums include What God Wants to Hear, which features songs on his faith. In a new interview, Jonathan Cain states that faithfully and open arms were inspired by God and reference God. Don't stop believing faithfully, open arms and separate ways, worlds apart, are still popular 40 years after Cain wrote them. He worked with Feed the Children and Compassion International. Cain says his faith is most important in his life and music. He uses music to communicate his beliefs and connect with others. He also said his faith guided him through hard times and kept him grounded despite the music business's challenges. In conclusion, Jonathan Cain is a devout Christian. He used music to communicate his spiritual experience and connect with others. 
His story is a testament to the transformative power of faith and the impact it can have on one's life. Number 4. Mark Farner As the lead singer and guitarist for one of the most popular rock bands of the 1970s, Grand Funk Railroad, Mark Farner seemed to be the definition of a rock icon when he played without a shirt on. But Grand Funk's success was short-lived, and by the start of the 1980s, the band was no longer making music. Later in the decade, Farner found a new calling and put out the Christian rock album, Just Another Injustice. It was clear that Farner had changed when he wrote songs like Judgment Day Blues and Come to Jesus. Since then, Farner has made other contemporary Christian CDs, like If It Wasn't For Grace, Some of his fans were upset when he re-recorded Grand Funk's classic song, Some Kind of Wonderful, with new spiritual lyrics in 1991, but they forgave him when he and the rest of Grand Funk went on a successful tour together later in the decade. Today, the band tours without him, but he plays regularly as a solo act, playing both Grand Funk classics and Christian rock songs. Number 5. Nico McBrain After attending church with his wife Rebecca in 1999 and having an intense conversion experience, McBrain devoted his life to Christ. According to McBrain's account to Willow Creek Association News, he prayed to accept Christ and then began to read the Bible. In my heart, I had a love affair with Jesus, he explained. McBrain continues to tour with Iron Maiden, performing the songs that made the group famous. He is also a member of the worship music team at his Florida church. He feels that his seemingly inconsistent way of life is part of God's plan. McBrain has presented his testimony in front of heavy metal fans and witnessed their conversion to Christianity. He also frequently talks his convictions with his fellow Iron Maiden members. Number 6. Alice Cooper I never cried. Cooper is known for his dark music and strange images, but many people don't know that he was raised by a pastor and came back to Christianity in the 1980s. Cooper told Greg Laurie in an interview that he had always believed in God, but that when he became a musician, he turned away from his Christian roots. Take away, take away Cooper gave up drugs and alcohol after his cocaine use got worse, and his wife Cheryl, who was also the child of a pastor, left him in 1983. When he and his wife got back together, one of her conditions was that they go to Christian counseling. This made them both go back to church. Since then, Cooper has been able to balance his music career with his family, run a Christian youth center in Arizona, and sometimes teach Bible studies. Cooper says that after he became a Christian, he thought about leaving rock and roll, but his pastor told him that wasn't necessary. I uh, was baptized, and um, I went to my pastor, and I said, I, I think i got to quit being Alice Cooper now. Mm -hmm. And he goes, really? He says, do you think God makes mistakes? Mm. And I went, no. He says, look where he put you. Yeah. He puts you in, he said, he puts you in the exact camp of the Philistines, yeah. and you were basically the leader. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> so now... What if you're Alice Cooper, but what if you're now following Christ? Wow. And you're a rock star, but you don't live the rock star life. Yeah. Some critics Your have said that Cooper's stage persona changed a little after he became a Christian again. Cooper had said over the course of his career that his music and stage show were built around a character. Cooper's actions were like Bono's Mr. Macfisto in that they were meant to make a character who is scary in a funny way but not someone to look up to. Sketches and stunts during Cooper's show, like when he sang a song and then nurses came on stage to put him in a straitjacket, made up a loose storyline, kind of like a musical without the talking parts. After the 1980s, Cooper's shows had more clear plot lines about bad guys getting what they deserved. Cooper doesn't want to be known as a born-again Christian celebrity. He told Hard Music Magazine, being a Christian is something you grow into. 
You find out. Your Bible studies are where you go. You pray. It's easy to think about Alice Cooper instead of Christ. I'm a rock singer. I think I'm low on the list of Christians who know a lot. So, don't look to me for answers. I'm a different person now. Don't judge Alice based on what he was in the past. Praise God for where I am now. Number 7. Dan Spitz Guitarist for the thrash metal band Anthrax. Spitz was raised in a Jewish home, but in 2000, he became a Messianic Jew. This is a mix of Jewish and Christian beliefs that upholds Jewish traditions while recognizing that Jesus is the only way to be saved. Spitz also started the Christian music group Red Lamb, whose songs were known for bringing attention to autism. Don Chaffin from Voices of Extreme and keyboardist Chris Vrenna were also in the group. Dave Mustin joined early on, but in the end, he went back to writing songs with Spitz. Puzzle Box, written by Mustin and Spitz, was said to be the first heavy metal song about autism. Bob and Suzanne Wright, who started the organization Autism Speaks, were in the video for the song. Number 8. Carrie Livgren Carrie wrote hits like Carrie on Wayward Son and Dust in the Wind, which helped the band Kansas become famous all over the world and win praise from critics. Dust in the, wind. All they are the band has since sold over 14 million recordings and has many gold and multi-platinum albums. Carrie Livgren's first solo album, Seeds of Change, came out in 1980, after he became an evangelical Christian. It had vocals by Ronnie James Dio and David Pack of Ambrosia, drums by Jethro Tull's Barry Moore Barlow, and guest spots by Friends from Kansas. A book by Kerry with the same name as the album was also released at the same time. Together, they told the story of Kerry's spiritual journey, which had been going on for years and was often the subject of his Kansas songs. Kerry's second self-produced album for CBS, Timeline, came out in 1983, the same year he left the band Kansas. He formed the band AD with the musicians who worked on that project. From 1983 to 1986, the band put out two albums and went on a lot of tours. Number 9. Bob Dylan I'ma take this bad off of me. Bob Dylan says that he is both Christian and Jewish. No famous rock star has ever changed their religion as much as Bob Dylan has. The person who wrote Don't Follow Leaders, Watch Your Parking Meters went on tour in 1979 to promote his gospel album Slow Train Coming. He didn't play any of his old songs. Between songs, he preached about hell and fire. In 1979, he told the crowd, I told you, the times they are changing, and they did. I told you that blowing in the wind was the answer, and it was. The answer, my friend, is a in the wind. I'm telling you now that Jesus is coming back, because he is. There's no other way to get to heaven. Jesus will come back to set up his kingdom for a thousand years in Jerusalem. By the middle of the 1980s, the singer who was born Robert Allen Zimmerman had gone back to his Jewish roots, which is sure to have made his mother very happy. <laughs> Number 10. Dave Mustin Dave Mustin is a well-known figure in the music business. He is the legendary guitarist and lead singer of the thrash metal band Megadeth. But what many people may not know is that Mustin is a devoted Christian. Mustin's path to becoming a Christian was not an easy one. In his younger years, he was known for living a wild life that included drinking and using drugs. But at the beginning of the 2000s, he started to believe in Christianity. Since then, he has been a very vocal supporter of the faith. Mustin talked to the Christian Post in 2018 about how he became a Christian and how that has changed his life. He said that he grew up in a Christian home but had turned away from his faith when he was younger. But, um, you know, something just happened where I, uh, 
I was just yearning for a difference in my life. I felt really empty, you know, and, and um, you know, the drugs weren't doing it, the alcohol wasn't doing it, you know. I mean, it would make you feel good for a little while, but that was kind of like peeing your pants on a cold night. It's, it's but as he got older, he realized that his way of life couldn't go on forever, and he began to look for a higher power. Mustin says that his wife and daughter got him interested in Christianity and helped him get back to it. He says that his new faith has given him a sense of direction and purpose that he didn't have before. He also thinks that Christianity has helped him beat his addictions and become a better person. Even though Mustin is a Christian, he hasn't shied away from heavy metal, which some people might think goes against his faith. He thinks that music is a way to express himself and that he can use it to spread good things and talk about his faith. In the end, Dave Mustin's decision to become a Christian may have surprised some of his fans, but it has had a huge effect on his life. He has found the peace and sense of purpose he had been looking for, and he continues to use his music to share his faith and spread positive messages. Number 11, Lou Graham I've gotta take a little time Lou Graham is an American rock singer and songwriter who is best known for being the lead singer of the British-American rock band Foreigner when they first started out. Louis Andrew Gramatico was born in Rochester, New York. His parents were the singer Nicky and the band leader and trumpet player Benny Gramatico. In an interview with Fox News, he was asked about how he became a Christian again. He said, that happened right before Hazelden, a drug treatment center. We had just played a sold-out show at Madison Square Garden, and the record company party that followed went on until 4 or 5 a.m. Everyone was in the same state, and when I went back to my hotel room, I couldn't sleep. I just started evaluating myself and thinking about what I had become. I was very sad about it and worried that my kids would see me like this. I finally got down on my knees and asked God to get rid of this plague. He says, I'm a born-again Christian who is very religious. God has something to do with everything I do. I am sure that he gave me life and saved it. I work for him. Number 12. Ringo Starr John Lennon caused a worldwide storm by claiming that the Beatles were more popular than Jesus. Furor is developing over comments John Lennon made. Quote, Christianity will go. It will vanish and shrink. We're more popular than Jesus. Unquote. Now, more than four decades on, it seems his former bandmate Ringo Starr has acknowledged a humbler place in the grand scheme of things. The drummer says he has found God, after taking a long and winding road to enlightenment. Open up your heart, let's come together. Ringo Starr, the famous drummer and former member of the Beatles, has been open about his Christian faith and how it has affected his life. Starr's faith is an important part of who he is, even if he doesn't talk about it as much as some other celebrities. In an interview with The Guardian in 2010, Ringo Starr said that he was raised Catholic but had stopped going to church when he first started out as a musician. But he says he found his faith again in the 1980s and has been a committed Christian ever since. Starr says that it was his wife Barbara Bach who led him back to Christianity. He says she put him in touch with a Bible study group, and that's when he started to see how faith could help him. Starr also thinks that his faith helped him get through some of the problems he had while he was in the Beatles, like drinking and using drugs. Starr is a Christian, but he has never tried to force his beliefs on other people. He thinks that everyone has the right to their own beliefs and that it's important to respect other people's views. But he has used his music to show what he believes and to tell his fans good things. Peace and Love, which is one of Starr's most famous songs, has become something of a mantra for him. He often says this phrase in interviews and in public, and he thinks it's important to spread peace and love everywhere you go. In conclusion, Ringo Starr may not talk a lot about his Christian beliefs, but they have had a big impact on his life. In the 1980s, he found his faith again, which helped him get through some of the hard times he was going through. He still uses his music to send positive messages to his fans. Let's change the world. Starr thinks that peace and love are the most important things, and he wants to spread these ideas wherever he goes. Number 13. 
Bono. See the stone set in your eyes. See the Paul David Hewson is an Irish singer-songwriter, musician, businessman, and philanthropist who goes by the stage name Bono. He is best known as the lead singer of the rock band U2, which is based in Dublin. Bono was born and raised in Dublin, Ireland. He went to Mount Temple Comprehensive School, where he met Alison Stewart, who would become his wife, and the other people who would become U2. Bono writes almost all of U2's songs, and he often writes about religion, society, and politics. In the beginning, Bono's lyrics gave U2's music a rebellious and spiritual tone. As the band got better, his lyrics started to be influenced more by his own life and the lives of the other band members. Songs like, Where the Streets Have No Name, talk about how much we want God, while songs like, I Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For, talk about how we haven't found God yet and probably won't until eternity. Bono has always been open about being a Christian. Last year, Bono told RTE, who is Christ? Is a question that defines a Christian. You don't get off easy by calling yourself a great thinker or philosopher. He went around saying he was the Messiah. Because he said he was the Son of God, he was crucified. He was either the Son of God, or crazy. I find it hard to believe that millions of people's lives have been touched and changed by some crazy person. I don't believe it. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to Rated G and ring the bell to get notified about our newest video. Number 14. Johnny Cash I keep a close watch on this heart of mine I keep my Johnny Cash was an American singer-songwriter, guitarist, actor, and author, who was widely thought to be one of the most important musicians of the 20th century. Because you're mine, I walk the line even though he is mostly known as a country music legend, his songs and sound also included rock and roll, rockabilly, blues, folk, and gospel. Then sings my soul, my God. Because of this, Cash was inducted into the country music, rock and roll, and gospel music halls of fame, which is very rare. A writer once tried to paint Johnny Cash into a corner by trying to get him to admit that he only believed in one religion. Last but not least, Cash laid down the law, as a believer that Jesus of Nazareth, a Jew, the Christ of the Greeks, was the anointed one of God, born of the seed of David, on faith as Abraham had faith, and it was counted to him as righteousness, I am grafted onto the true vine and am one of the heirs of God's covenant with Israel. What? asked the author. Cash shot back, I'm a Christian. Don't put me in a box again. I hope you like today's list. Check out these other clips from Rated G, and be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get updates on our newest videos. Thanks for watching this episode. God bless you. I'm Julia. 4 of Rated G.